Okay, so if you are, are looking for a review of meiosis and how to draw it, you've come to the right place. Uh, we're going to try to do this with this new uh, black background. It's a little cooler. Um, and I wish that I could draw this all on one page, but I don't think I can make it do that. So, so we'll work our way through meiosis. If you need to backtrack, just, just uh, rewind on the video. So remember that meiosis, even though this isn't on your study guide, Meiosis begins with interphase. Right, so the first cell that we're going to draw is an interphase cell. And remember that interphase cells have a very definite nucleus. And then they have DNA, but it's in the form of chromatin instead of chromosomes. So the way we can draw that best is just to do some squigglies. Right, so this is the chromatin that you would see during interphase. And we'll do a couple different colors here um, mixed in that nucleus. Now, the next step is to transition into meiosis 1. And the first stage of meiosis 1, I'm sure you guys know, is prophase 1. Now, this is an important cell that you're going to draw. The prophase 1 cell is going to uh, start making a spindle apparatus. So here's a couple centrioles. Here's a spindle starting to form. It's going to have a nucleus, but that envelope is going to be going away. Now, unless they've changed it, I think in your book it does not show a nucleus in prophase, but please make sure that you indicate it somehow here, preferably with a dotted line. Now, I'm going to use two sets of chromosomes for our example. Um, and uh, what we want to do is use two different colors. And the reason that we're going to use two different colors is so that you can see crossing over. So remember, crossing over, probably the most important part that makes meiosis unique. So let's go ahead and do our second set of chromosomes here too. And during prophase one, you want to make sure that you are showing these crossing over events. Alright, after prophase 1, the cell is going to move into metaphase 1. And remember, metaphase, we're looking midline. Uh, but what's unique here is that our line at the midline is going to be 2 by 2. So, let's start simple. We're going to draw our spindle apparatus, which has now fully formed. So it should kind of be football shaped should go from one side of the cell to the other. And then we're going to put our pairs of chromosomes um, along the midline, again, showing them two by two. But here's the important part. We have to maintain the crossing over that has happened. So because of crossing over now, we have an X that's mostly pink with a little blue foot and an X that's mostly blue with a little pink foot. And that's going to be true for both of those sets that we saw um, in the first stage there at prophase 1. Okay, so metaphase, they're here along the middle, and, um, and we've got our crossing over still indicated with our different colors. After metaphase 1 comes anaphase 1. Remember, anaphase apart. So these chromosomes are going to spread apart. One thing that's really important in this anaphase cell is that you draw your spindle again, but that also you clearly separate the two uh, homologous chromosomes from each other. So make sure that if this is what metaphase looks like, then in anaphase, we're going to have those X's further apart. So let me draw my first two. I'm going to draw them way over here. And again, they're going to have their little blue feet because they have gone through crossing over. And I can draw my other two. I'm going to put them way over here. And I'm going to keep those little pink feet so we show crossing over there as well. After anaphase 1, we move into telophase 1. 
and we also say usually and cytokinesis because in one, one little picture here we're going to show these cells split. So after uh, anaphase the cells are going to split in half. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw this anaphase cell again real quick that we saw on the last slide. And the reason I'm going to do that is because you have to make sure that you send the X's where they're really supposed to go. So we got our mostly pink ones over here. And they got blue feet. And then our mostly blue ones with pink feet again. And now, when we go in, we move into this telophase 1 and cytokinesis. Make sure that you actually split your cell here and that your results are the two sides on either side of that line. So here's a cell. We'll give it a nucleus because it's telophase. Here's the other cell with a nucleus. And I'm going to take these chromosomes and I'm going to put them in this cell and these chromosomes and put them in this cell. So here's my two mostly pink ones with blue feet. Here's my two mostly blue ones with pink feet. Now we're ready to move on into meiosis 2. So for meiosis 2, sequence of stages is still exactly the same, except now we've got two cells that we are watching. So here's prophase 2. And also remember that meiosis 2 is a lot like mitosis. So prophase 2 we got our two cells, same as before. We're going to build a spindle in each one. We're going to have our nucleus disappearing in each one. And again, we're going to keep consistent with the chromosomes that we're working with. So here's our two mostly pink with blue feet. Here's our two mostly blue with pink after prophase 2, we're going to move into metaphase 2. And this time, we are lining up at that midline again. But this time, we're doing it like we did in mitosis. So it's going to be a single file line of our two chromosomes right along the midline of the cell. So we've got our two mostly pink ones, blue crossover leg, our two mostly blue ones with our pink crossed over leg. After metaphase 2 comes anaphase 2. Hopefully you're following along on your paper. Um, anaphase 2, I'm going to draw these cells a little more oblong because again it's really important <clears throat> that we show those chromosomes separating apart from one another. So we got our spindle in each cell. Now <clears throat> the chromatids of each of these chromosomes have separated from one another. So we've got the left hand side of a pink X, the left hand side of a pink X, and then real close, watch, we've got the uh, right hand side of the pink X, the right hand side of the pink X, but don't forget, we still had that crossing over. So now look, I've got a set of chromosomes that are mostly pink with little blue feet. I've got a set of chromosomes that are actually still all pink in this cell. Now, on the other side, we had those chromosomes that were mostly blue with pink feet. So here's my mostly blue half X's with their little pink feet. And here's my all blue half X's. So I got all blue, I got blue with pink feet. So notice all I did is I took those X's and I split them right down the middle and sent half one way and half the other and I still maintained the crossing over or the genetic recombination. Now after this we're gonna get telophase 2 and cytokinesis again. I'm going to try to draw this all in one. So we're going to split, do our second division of meiosis. 
which is going to give us four daughter cells in the end. Now that we've done telophase, these are four cells that all have a nucleus. And the most important thing is that you make sure that you put the right chromosomes in the right cells and you keep those together. So to finish up here, we've got our mostly pink ones with blue feet. We've got our all pink ones. We've got our mostly blue ones with pink feet. And we've got our all blue ones. So check out what we've done. We've finished up with four new cells. They all have half the DNA we started with. And if you look across here, they are all um, genetically unique. They all have something different in their nucleus now. Either mostly pink, little blue, all pink, mostly blue, little pink, or all blue. Now the last thing that you need to be able to do is tell a difference between what would happen if this was a male or if this was a female. So if this was male meiosis, we would call that spermatogenesis, because we're making new sperm. And remember, this is going to make four sperm. All of them have a nucleus. In males, these are all going to be about the same size. Since they're sperm, we're going to put a little tail on them. And then we're again going to maintain the correct chromosomes in each one here. Made these too small. Okay, now the female is different and maybe a little harder to remember, but easier. Um, in the long run, I think. Now, for females, this is called oogenesis. Anytime you see that oo, it means ovum or egg. And remember, for the female, you're going to get one egg that's quite large, and then you're going to get these three polar bodies. So if you're drawing this, make sure that one of your four products in female meiosis is way bigger. Now, same thing again, though. We want to put the chromosomes in these, and we want to maintain those crossed over legs. So if I said to uh, draw specifically the results for female, this right here, this lower half of the screen, is what you would draw at the end, rather than the generic telophase 2 that we drew on the last slide. So that takes care of it all. Please don't hesitate to ask me questions if you have them. Hopefully we will cover at least some of this stuff in class. And um, don't forget probably the most important thing here is to not only know your steps, but use two colors, show crossing over, and maintain crossing over consistently throughout the whole thing. Good luck.